Okay, perfect. Uh, I I mean, this is too much of music. So I think we can chat for some time uh, and then we can kick start. So hi, hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Shanto and I take part of, uh, sorry, I take care of communities at Hudlo One. And we have some really great music on this Hudlo One spaces. And I think we should uh, have more uh, choices of music here. Uh, what do you think, uh, Ayush, Sushmit? I think we have a very set of limited music here. And I think this is this has been the feedback from the community as well. This is something that maybe we can uh, do after the note sale happens. No, no, absolutely. I think I was. Uh, I, was one, I think I, I can see him, um, David is also laughing here. Hi, David. Get to meet you. I'm seeing a lot of people. All a lot of names. Uh, a lot of people when we interacted for a long time now. So I was trying to convince as well, David, uh, to move away from Riverside onto Hudlow One as well. I think one of the things which we can also do to make him also move is add more of these musics uh, uh, i think we have four of them right now uh, we should have more than 15 of them we should do a voting in the community and just add all of those things as fast as possible uh, but yeah i actually like one of the tunes which is uh, cradle of soul i really like that but we should we should need more of them but yeah, i'm so happy and so glad to see all of you hi ck uh, yeah been off amr great to meet all of you Awesome. Uh, I think we can kick start. Uh, I'm recording this meeting as well, but it is it won't be open for all the members. We'll drop more notes on how to access this meeting later. But I think yes, uh, over to you. Uh, we can kick start. So I'll quickly introduce, and then we can kick start this uh, entire session. So today uh, we have Shushmit, who is the co-founder and CTO of Hudlo One. We have Shruti, uh, who is chief economist and all the mind brains behind the tokenomics and how the token would work around. Uh, this is designed by Shruti. Ayush uh, is the CEO and co-founder uh, who takes care of everything at Hudlo One. You name it, he takes care of it. And then we have uh, uh, Webhub, who is the protocol lead. So yes, uh, over to you folks. Uh, I think I'll just mute my mic. I'll listen to it and over to you. Hi, folks. How is everyone doing today? Um, so we thought that we will um, we will actually run this token economic session. You know, initially, we were thinking of just doing this for our own team. But then Shushmit had this amazing idea. We're like, why don't we just do it for the entire community? So um, here we are uh, on a very, very short notice. Uh, we've um, quickly jotted down all of our thoughts on um, token economics, just to give you guys a very, very, um, very, very summarized overview of what's going to happen in terms of node sales, as well as in the future, um, the TGE itself, and how we can see the valuation as well as the market cap of HODL token growing through all of these different stages. Um, so um, I will share my screen here. So we've actually like prepared a few slides um, to, you know, kind of structure this uh, entire content, um, you know, we'll walk you through the introduction to the DRTC network, and then we will go on to, uh, of course, talking about the protocol itself. Then we will dive into the protocol economics, which involves both, um, of course, the network flywheel as well as C, um, as well as the value accrual. And of course, and then in the final uh, part, which is possibly like the most important part. So stay tuned until then, that that will cover the um, the growth of the value of the DRTC network. And so um, so we'll get started here. I'm gonna share my screen. Perfect. So, um, so yes, we will be covering various different sections like I just explained earlier. Um, as for introduction to DRTC, um, who better to take it on other than Shishmati? He, um, he came up with this idea of Huddle 01 way back in the day. So Shishmit, over to you. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Shruti. And GMGM guys, like I'm so happy like all of you are here and like curious about Huddle Token Economics. What I believe is like we we ought to be like very transparent and very like build with community because we ideally want to be community person. That's why like we thought of like we need to share like everything about our token economics and just be transparent with our community of what we are having and all of those parts. But before starting the network, right? So we are or ourselves are on this huddle platform. But what we have to like envisioning is like the DRTC network. 
and like what actually is a design is uh the rtc network like we would see in the next slide class so can you like have the next slide or maybe yeah maybe i'll just screen share. okay it's fine uh so like a drtc network is basically changing the paradigm how real-time communication used to happen as of now but since the drtc network it won't be the same way it happens in the world right now right now everything is going through centralized servers and they are almost controlled so we want to make the network that real-time communication a sovereign network what we mean by sovereign network that each and everyone has this control or sovereign not like a bunch of people who are operating it now this network has this incentive mechanisms also it's just like bitcoin ethereum everywhere like if you are a part of a node you like basically are incentivized to join the network so it means like people who are basically bringing value to the network are also rewarded uh, in the same way through huddle tokens right now rtc happens on a client server technology but we are basically bringing this client server to a node to node technology so that is what like the whole basis of the drtc network is uh, so, yeah so what actually it holds right so if we see like there is like a difference between a public good and a private good right now this technology or the rtc is a private good which means you cannot be like a part of that network but the rtc network actually changes that because it makes this network that we have as a public good what do we mean by public good is something that is non-excludable and non-rivalrous on that part which means if you are uh, using a network it does not diminish the value of other person who is using the network but this is like not currently holds true with the private good or all the things that are happening and non-excludable means that no one can stop you to be part of the network so it's completely like credible neutral that we say so a person coming from any geography anything can like just run a node and be part of the network but this is what does not happen right now with uh, the current rtc type that, that the world has so this is like the brief premiere and what do you actually solve so we have solved by making the network as open neutral borderless decentralized and censorship resistant so these are the more core properties that we are actually achieving and we want to make it like community owned like all the rtc that like goes into the pocket of uh, all the communities that we have yes so we know like to achieve this network of for the drtc network there is like a requirement to get this client server into a node to node mode so which means what we are actually prioritizing having this node like which is basically a network of node makes the drtc network so which means that if you are having a node it's basically would be rewarded and ownership there would always be a continuous funding to the media node which means if you hold a media node and you are running into a drtc network you will always earn the tokens there is like no like it, it's not like that the funding and everything would stop you will always get the tokens till the part you are like participating into the network itself so what this enable is that it's called a continuous funding so people are like incentivized to run the node so that they can get the huddle token in itself now this the value that the is presented by the drtc network is basically capitalized by the apps that are actually forming on top of drtc network and that's how the network effect starts to happen and all the value that is generated by the drtc network it gets distributed to the node operators the media node actually what it does is very simple like if you have like a free internet bandwidth in your house you can just use it to run the node and the node would give you tokens so it's as simple as that you don't require like a very heavy giga compute gpu or like bitcoin miners to be part of the network it's just that if you have like sufficient internet network from 250 mpbs to 1 gbps you would be able to earn the huddle token so it's basically monetizing the bandwidth that you have at home in preference to huddle token and the other part is like there would always be a specific number of huddle tokens available right now at phase one we only have 20,000 nodes that is available which means the network is not like infinitely like any number of nodes could be joined there would always be a specific amount of number of nodes so yeah i just wanted to uh maybe Shruti, if you can make yeah so i just wanted to uh, explain about the metcalfe laws and why the nodes and the rtc network would be basically valuable with respect to time 
So there was like a very famous researcher called Matt Calfello and he actually came up with this. So you can see the diagram, right? If more number of participants or the nodes actually increases in the network, the network becomes more valuable. So here you can see like it, it's, it's the basis of the network effects it happen. So which applies same for the hardware DRTC also. If more number of nodes are actually joining the network, the more valuable the no, the network becomes. And all those value is basically captured in hurdle token and distributed to node operators themselves. Yep. So next part is like protocol economics that we are actually seeing, like how we are actually designed on those part. So you can see maybe like Suti would do like a better job explaining all of those part. Sure. Yeah. Let me take this on. Um... Awesome. So Shishman went to an overview of um, essentially what the DRTC network is, our values um, about censorship resistance, as well as being open, as well as neutral, as well as maximizing the amount of decentralization that we have, essentially like the Nakamoto coefficient. Um, now let's talk about how we're actually achieving all of this with the DRTC network. Here, what you can see is basically a network flywheel of the DRTC network. Um, the core is essentially media nodes, um, and media nodes are essentially powering and supplying DRTC data so that they can actually provide media. Uh, by media, we're referring to anything from audio-video meetings to spaces like the one that we're on, uh, as well as any other application that will utilize um, this type of decentralized bandwidth and uh, real-time communications. Any application that needs those um, is going to be powered by media nodes on the DRTC network. So um, what happens is, um, you know, we have these clients here. Clients are basically you and me, you know, we're both participating in this call. So we're essentially um, the clients of the um, nodes that we're, that we're using. Clients essentially connect um, through orchestrators to media nodes in order to um, in order to basically run and participate in meetings on the DRTC um, protocol. So essentially, clients, you know, everybody in this room is essentially consuming this DRTC data in order to participate in this meeting, which is supplied by media nodes. Um, and media nodes, of course, are operating on our uh, validation of um, execution layer, which is layer three. And um, they are also at the same time, because they are supplying this DRTC data, they also get rewarded. And these rewards are essentially minted by the DRTC protocol. And similarly, we have a mint and burn mechanism, right? So while we have a minting of nodes, uh, minting of node rewards, we at the same time also have burning of huddle tokens due to the consumption that's also happening on the network. So this burning and minting simultaneously is known as the dynamic mint and burn mechanism. Uh, it's based on the hyperorganic um, design philosophy, and we will get to more of that in, in a little bit. And so as these media nodes are actually contributing uh, and supplying DRTC data to the network, they're earning their rewards. And they, we have market network effects on this side as well. So essentially, like going back to the previous um, previous slide of Metcalf's law, you might have also heard of this notion of network effects. Essentially, that's what Metcalf's law is. Essentially, um, with network effects, what you get is the more amounts of um, nodes that are participating in the network, the more valuable the overall network becomes. This is very, very, very evident in like. Um, for example, in social media platforms, right? Because the more number of friends that you have on the social media platform, the more valuable the social media platform be becomes. Um, like some of us, I think, are still on Facebook and stuff just because of the fact that a lot of our old friends are on it. Um, so that's um, that's the um, that's the effect of uh, Metcalf's law that you see in social networks. And similarly, when it comes to huddle as well, we have social network effects on the participant side and on the media nodes, which is the supply side, we have uh, market network effects because the more nodes that are on this network, the more valuable it becomes because it becomes more um, distributed across various different geographies. And it also um, means that it brings a lot more bandwidth um, for consumption. 
So it also creates a more efficient market, right? Because you have much more availability of, uh, of bandwidth and you have also uh, much more reliability for that reason because you have uh, multiple different nodes available in a particular geography rather than just a few. So your quality as well as reliability go up because we're able to create this um, robust network of multiple nodes um, while at the same time the cost of DRTC data will go down because now there's good amount of competition that's happening between the nodes so the more efficient the market the more we're able to ensure that uh, the price is right when it comes to DRTC data um, and what all of this does is that it contributes to the entire DRTC ecosystem. So this is the D ecosystem. DRTC ecosystem is essentially the ecosystem of all of the decentralized applications that are living on top of the DRTC network. So for example, like what we have um, in terms of HODL, HODL is one such DRTC application. We've got Farcaster as well, Farhouse as well, which is uh, another application that's also on the DRTC network. And similarly, you guys can also use your own um, your own skills in order to build uh, applications on the DRTC ecosystem. We have SDKs in order for you guys to also contribute to building and also benefiting from the DRTC ecosystem as well. So when you build your dApps on the DRTC ecosystem, you're able to make use of all of these advantages, having this um, really well-priced DRTC data that you can offer to your users and also you're able to plug into the high quality bandwidth that you're getting from the media nodes um, on the DRTC network. Um, so we've got the HODL token design philosophy as well. Shishma, do you want to take this on or I can go through it as well? Yeah, I'll just like give a brief uh, on those, like, like how we are actually designing the token in itself, right? So right now, if you see like we are, we are like actually becoming this token first, and community first uh, a network right previously it was like a startup but right now it's becoming a network which is basically coordinated by the token the huddle token in itself so for this to happen the token has to be engineered in a very specific manner right just like how nodes basically is a distribution to the network wherein like an end user would be operating a node instead of like a giant company just uh, uh, handling the server in itself so those were the paradigm shift but if you see like our token design right so like while designing the token economics there are like specific factors that we have specifically taken care of from like designing fdb to distribution to reward to airdrops right so what are those considerations that we are taking so first is like we need to be like a super hyper organic hyper or organic is basically a swarm optimization which means like how like a group of people can come together and everything become bottom up right instead of being like a top down hierarchy so that's one of the core proposition how hyper organic design system works the second is genie index so genie index actually ranges from zero to one and what it says is basically like a wealth inequality so if the genie index is of a currency is around one it means like a very few people have a very large amount of money which is ideally we don't want with handle tokens and huddle token like we want it to be like equally distributed among all the people that we have so which means we want to minimize the gene index and all of our designs and decisions and engineering have been based on of these indexes itself the other is like basically maximizing the nakamoto index that we have right so what actually is a Naka, nakamoto coffee coefficient that actually says so we can see like Genie index actually gives you a good idea, but it's not like just an accurate model to do it. So we also take care of Nakamoto coefficient. Now, ideally, we want a Nakamoto coefficient is basically a, a term of an analysis that says that how robust your uh, network is, like how decentralized your network is. So which means if you have more Nakamoto coefficient for your tokens and for your nodes, then you would be having basically much more better decentralization and it should be much more robust for collusions to happen like there won't be like a bunch of people taking over the network and taking it to the side that we don't want right so, so, uh, ideal example is bitcoin like you need to be like at least 51 percent to have this nakamoto coefficient take off like for a takeover to network to happen similarly is for ethereum similarly is for solana right so ideally we want to like maximize our nakamoto coefficient of the drtc network 
we would come with an exact value maybe in our uh, upcoming uh, community calls but these are the factors that we are taking uh, the consideration the other is the safety value so what exactly safety value says that it basically is a way to coordinate human uh, together when there is like an irregular 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 uh, contribution that's happening which means like some people would be contributing more and some people would be contributing less but there is not an exact way to basically calculate those things so safely value help us to determine uh, that uh, distribution of reward and it's a, it's according to a game theory and it helps people to coordinate together trust us so this is all the design parameters that we have taken into consideration while design the huddle tokens and if you compare like huddles fdv the price and everything everything comes around to be in favor of community right so like other projects are like basically if we compare they are not faring very well on these coefficients and so ideally we should judge all the tokens according to like these measure coefficient but these are not like the stand alone and like this is also actually a very good way for people to test the quality of tokens that we have yeah you know i i really like what i really like about these four factors here is that they all point to basically various different versions of decentralization uh, for example hyperorganic design is a mechanism to ensure that any sort of value that is created in a decentralized fashion is actually captured by the economic system itself and that allows for the protocol essentially to morph itself in response to the conditions that are created by the organic demand that is happening on the network itself, as well as the organic extraction of supply. Um, and then we have um, the Gini index, which is essentially a measure of wealth decentralization um, because you have wealth distribution um, that is much more equal amongst all of the participants in the network. So Gini index is um, essentially decentralization when it comes to the financial uh, health across the network. And then we've got Nakamoto coefficient that's pointing more so to the security related decentralization because this more talks about like the number of node operators that are um, existing within the network. So when it comes to Nakamoto coefficient, the more amount of nodes you have on the network, the more secure your system is, and that also makes it um, more decentralized. And then finally, the Shapley value. Now, you know, this is kind of, you know, a little bit related to the Gini index um, in that um, the Shapley value essentially ensures that you're able to make the make a good Gini index happen. And the way that it do, does that is by uh, decentralizing the way that wealth is distributed. So while the Gini index talks about the um, talks about the wealth um, wealth distribution, this one actually mechanizes the way that we calculate how much um, needs to be paid out to the various participants in the network based on their contributions. So that's the Shapley value as well. So all of these actually like point to different things around um, decentralization. And you know, I know this word of decentralization gets thrown around a lot in this industry, but um, it's, you know, we should take care as to how we define it and ensure that we're actually hitting in, hitting all of the different points, all of the different ways that decentralization can be defined. Um, we have to ensure that uh, we are actually fulfilling all of them instead of just like being razor focused on like one specific um one specific way of decentralization so we want to ensure, ensure that um the benefits of the system of the drtc network especially are realized and co-owned by all of the different folks that are participating in the network particularly um anyone who owns owns nodes and also holds tokens. Okay, um, so then you're now asking like, how does the, um, how does um, value accrual actually happen on the DRTC network? How do um, nodes accrue value and how do tokens accrue value? How does the overall DRTC network accrue value? Um, and that's, that's what this essentially, the value accrual fly flywheel gives. So on the left side, we've got the demand. And then on the right side, we've got the supply. And you can see how this mirrors a little bit the network flywheel as well. So I put together this, um, this, um, this flywheel specifically in order to show the value flows and the economic flows within the system. So 
although the network flywheel will explains essentially like the inner workings of the um of the coordination different between the multiple agents in the system this one explains how the value flows across all of those agents so as we have um an increasing amount of um activity from both sides of the demand so there are two agents that particularly contribute to the demand um, number one is clients and end users. So these are essentially folks like you and I, anyone that's participating in meetings, um, they contribute to the demand for the RTC uh, network. And then the second one um, that also contributes is also the builders that are building dApps on the DRTC ecosystem, the ones that are using the SDKs, the ones that are um, building any sort of decentralized apps, because what they do is that they uh, create these catalyzed um, catalyzed apps that can actually bring in even more users. Um, so both of these actually contribute to the demand side. And of course, here you have the social network effects happening because this is, this is of course, a communication app. So um, the more folks that are in the system, the more valuable it is as a communication tool. Um, so this demand, um, essentially what it does is the more um, demand we have, then we have more consumption of DRTC data on the DRTC network itself. And as we do that, then um, according to how much data is consumed in the DRTC network, we also burn tokens. Um, so when we burn these tokens, the value of huddle goes up because it's now capturing the amount of um, the amount of demand that actually happened um, that was actually received on the DRTC network. And so the way that we the way that the DRTC network interprets the real world value that is being created by this increasing demand that's coming from end users is by burning tokens. And um, thereby now the value of that demand is now captured within the DRTC network. So then the hollow value goes up. What that means is that media nodes have a more of a potential to earn for two reasons. What, the number one reason is that um, they are able to maximize their reward potential because now you have more demand, more users. So you have more um, bandwidth that you can actually give to these users. So there's more um, demand for media nodes them themselves in terms of their core functionality. And then the second reason is that the value of the um, whole token itself goes up. That means that translates directly to how much the huddle tokens that the media nodes earn translates in terms of USDC value or USD value or any any fiat that you prefer. Um, so that um, those are the two levers through which um, the increase in huddle value and the increase in demand essentially contributes to the um, to the benefit of media nodes. And so what that means that also um, makes the DRTC network a very attractive place for more media nodes to join. So that means we get more suppliers, more media nodes. And that also means that there will be more competition amongst these suppliers as well. And so what that that is basically represented by the market network effects. Um, there's more suppliers, there's more supplier competition, but there's also at the same time, the network itself is becoming more valuable because we're able to offer better quality, better reliability, uh, better availability across various different geographies as well. Um, and and then um, we've also got, in order to reward these media nodes, we've got the minting mechanism as well. So the more suppliers are there, the more rewards need to get minted. And that means that there is going to be increased market efficiency and increased robustness as well, because now we have more tokens in circulation. That means the trading volume is going to be up. Uh, we also have more suppliers. That means the market becomes a lot more efficient as they uh, respond to the increased demand. And of course, and then this this essentially is a um, positive feedback loop sort of cycle that essentially keeps on growing and self-reinforcing in order to um, grow value on the DRTC network. Um, okay, then we come to the parameters um, through which we thought about the huddle um, huddle token itself. Um, I think Shishmit, would you like to discuss this? Yeah, yeah. So I, I really enjoyed like the way you explained everything and all. So guys, like uh, would uh, like if you have any questions and everything, feel free to drop it on chat and like happy to take it on board. And we just want it to be like community driven and all of those parts.
but again like uh, talking about the parameters like we have spent like good enough time researching ourselves what works best for us how other projects were doing and we have basically arrived on those so there would only be like 200 million tokens in like total circulations that we have uh, and it will be till tz out of that 200 also like we have almost allocated more than 60 uh, percent to community so this is how our, our allocation works like 21 percent straight goes to the media node operators uh the five percent is basically there to make liquidity on centralized exchange and decentralized exchanges which is particularly means that if you are like having rewards you can basically exchange it for usd token and any other token on any decks and all of those parts so that's where like this liquidity is preserved for other is like we have reserved 20 percent for ecosystems which means like if any of you guys are making credible contribution in terms of like upgrading the media nodes or developing a future application on top of the RTC network, that is where all the ecosystem funds would go. It would be basically used to incentivize various activities in the DRTC network. And again, like 10% is the foundations. So what foundation does is that basically it keeps the network operational and live. So it's like we are making this network, but we won't be like dumping it on the community so that like the like community would run it. We would have their own foundation wherein like we would be using our expert R and D to upgrade and make it relevant to like all the environment that is going on presently right now. The forty percent is actually reserved for the team and the core investors that have come on the previous round. So particularly like you are seeing like the team has worked relentlessly like over four years uh, to get the platform and the network ready. So efforts have gone into R and D, and I think it this allocation is like on the minimum side for their uh, allocations to happen. The rest is like 4% staff and strategic partners. So if any of you guys like want to like buy hundred tokens and all of those parts, so this is the pool where the people can buy hundred tokens. So this is basically reserved for staff and strategic partners. So people who like bring like strategic value like opening conversation to other exchanges, other protocols and to other researchers, it's where like we align this uh, all the four percent strategy. Right now, this is not completely allocated. It's like one or two percent allocated, but rest are still reserved. So we can use this percentage to empower the community uh, that we have. So like we know that the hurdle has been like for quite a time. We have been working to perfect our products, to perfect our networks. And we had also like raised previously for around six million dollars from various uh, A-class elite invest investors that we have. So this is like valued at seventy-five million dollars as of now, which makes like with the total supply of two hundred million, the price of our token is like right now is zero point three. But this won't be the same because as we do our node sale, which Shruti will be explaining in the next set of slides, the price of the hurdle token would rise up to one to two dollars if the node sales happen all of those much because that is the way the whole uh, it is structured. Awesome, thank you. Um, yes, so as um, Shishma was saying, like leading up to mainnet, we've got um, several different activities that are planned um leading up to the token generation event gg itself um so you know recently um we've been discussing the pre-sale of media nodes as well and that means that nodes can essentially pre-book um nodes so that they can enter in phase one so phase one has twenty thousand nodes and if you pre-book then you're actually able to enter in a way that um you essentially reserve your spot on whichever tier that you want. So essentially whitelisting yourself to be able to um, buy during the public note sales. So during the public note sales, now the gates are open. Anyone is able to buy um, in a first come and first serve mechanism. So then here, um, anyone that already has been whitelisted and pre-booked, you're able to get your pre-booking orders fulfilled. And then the um, the public market is also able to um, able to purchase based on a first come first serve basis. Uh, of course, like here in the public sales, since it is public, like we want to give access to uh, anyone and everyone to be able to buy. So the dynamics of the first come first serve will be dominant here. Um, and and then once we reach um, 46.9 thousand nodes, um, that's when our node sales will end. It is possible that, you know, in the case that um, we um, basically want fewer nodes, then we might also choose to end it earlier so that we can ensure that anyone that is 
coming into the um, node sales in the early stages are able to reap their benefits by starting participating in the incentivized testnet. So um, when we do reach this 46.99K nodes, then the FTV is going to be 200 million because of all of the revenue that we have generated by um, through the node sales across this entire uh, entire phase. So node sales revenue um, calculates uh, in a very deterministic fashion, the node sales FTV, which is essentially 200 million. I'll just show in a slide right after this, how we calculating this. And then at this, um, at this uh, valuation, then the spot price will essentially be $1 um, for HODL. Following this, um, we start the incentivized testnet. Now, this is the hot topic that has been discussed so extensively um, for, for all of these for all of these few weeks. Um, essentially, the incentivized testnet is where nodes are able to earn bootstrapping rewards up to five um, testnet huddle per day. Um, now, these huddle um, tokens that are earned during the incentivized testnet, uh, you are able to start vesting them right away um, after. Uh, after TG. At TG, 5% of um, the earnings that you earn during the testnet will get unlocked. We wanted to make sure that, you know, we're unlocking some kind of tokens at TG itself for nodes so that nodes can see an immediate benefit uh, for being early contributors, essentially like co-building the network with us. So, um, so that's why we, we essentially decided that we will actually have an initial unlock during TG itself. And of course, on top of that, we've got this, um, you know, the 21% of all of the TG allocation is allocated specifically only to nodes, the media nodes that are active on the uh, on the incentivized testnet. So all of the tokens that are earned, um, the five hurdles per day, that all comes from the 21% pool. And we've ensured that like we've designed this um, We've designed this node sale incentivized testnet program to last for six months. And then following that, nodes have the option to basically go on to the mainnet where they can then earn um, earn tokens based on performance. So this is a TG, a few different things happen. Um, the main thing that happens is that um, now the DRDC network is live. Um, that means that media nodes can essentially earn media node live rewards, which are based on performance. And the second main thing that happens um, now, this is more from an economic perspective, is vesting begins. Um, when vesting begins, that means that um, tokens start to slowly go into circulating supply. Vesting will begin particularly, um, particularly of note is all of the vesting that begins for the ones, for all of the agents in the system that have immediate unlocks. So nodes are one of these folks. Nodes get a 5% immediate unlock which means that these amount of tokens go directly into circulation. And that means that the market cap also goes up. And then the third thing, uh, from the protocol economics perspective, the dynamic minting and burning mechanism begins. And these also contribute to the market cap. I'll, I'll just explain this um, in, a, in the next slide. Awesome. Now let's talk about nodes. The node market um, is one of the key markets that we're actually going to be opening up. Um, and then we've also have the token market. In the token market, you guys have been exposed to this, um, you know, ever since um, like 20, 2013, was it? Like, or yeah, essentially the token market whenever uh, Ethereum started and uh, all of the different tokens, uh, ERC20 tokens started also coming out. Token market is also something that we're going to be participating in. But more um, more interesting is this node market that we're, that, that we're actually opening up and how it enables true ownership of the means of production. Um, so let's have a look at that. Shishma, would you like to run yeah. through this? So like this is the most interesting part that we are having, right? So right now, like at DRTC Network, you have like two options if you are like, so you can like basically buy a node and after buying the node, you can have two options, which is like hold the node and hold and run the nodes, right? So ideally, like that, what we have seen with the Metcalfe laws, like the more number of nodes actually join the system, the whole ecosystem actually grows into the value. And that is how like the nodes would actually become like valuable with like time going by on those part. But particularly like if you want to like, and this would like just on the price appreciation of the node, a person would be making ROI. 
so they don't even need to run the nodes like suppose they, there is a person who does not have like the bandwidth that is required by the DRTC network still they would benefit just by like having and holding the nodes on those parts the other part and interesting thing that you can do so right now like there is no other way to get the hurdle tokens you can only get the hurdle tokens by like mining into the system and to mine you need a node so like if a person who has a node and it starts to be into the part of the network we know that in network at future there would be more number of huddle applications and there would be more other people integrating huddle into their software so the revenue for the drtc network would be increasing so you can see like this is not like a theoretical things that we are actually talking huddle application is actually live and like even the fan tv integration is actually going by and we would be seeing more of this thing happening now like i would love to have the scale that's like real time the meetings that happen so google if you see google meet they are doing like 100 million meetings every day and zoom is doing like 300 million meeting participation every day so even if we capture like 5% of those part this re revenue would be humongous so only the people who are actually operating the node would be getting that revenue so that revenue would be in terms of huddle token so here like basically i have shown like how you can basically uh, hold the node, no need to work into the network. Then also you can make the ROI because price of the huddle node would grow. And if you if you want to like have more of those thing rewards, so you can like basically earn up to five huddle tokens every day. And we know that after huddle tokens, node sale that has happened, the FTV would increase. So the price of the token would also increase. So a person who is basically running the node and getting the huddle token, they have like two upside benefit attached to it. So price of the token also grows and the price of the node also grows. So they have like a double benefit uh, from that part. And since the node market, like after the node sale would be a secondary market and that would become liquid, a person can easily enter and exit into the system. But like the caveat is that a person has to come early to mag to reap the maximum benefit of those things because these nodes are not infinite uh, these are only very particular number of nodes there would all be like 20,000 to 40,000 nodes into the network so it would become scarce as more number of applications and developers start to build on the huddle application and revenue from those apps are basically going to the nodes and those the network basically distributes that revenue in form of uh, token rewards so in next call like we would actually have this uh, exact dynamics how all of those things works on the on the technicalities how the nodes works how the application works and the various sdks that we have and even like the performance of huddle app so the huddle app has already completed like 7 million minutes right now and all the network effects are still happening so we are seeing this like a brief uh, of people adopting anywhere so in in drtc network or huddle huddle words there's always something for someone right if someone wants to use huddle app for user call they can use and there's no token anything required it's completely free of course but if someone wants to like contribute their internet bandwidth huddle actually enables them to do and they also enables them to earn token out of it by sharing the uh, end user bandwidth and similarly for the app developers right so if people want to build like audio video applications they can just get it permanent permissionlessly through the drtc network so and it would be like the higher performance and less cheaper real-time communication so in future there would be like a future tiktok coming a future whatsapp or web3 whatsapp or web3 telegram or a web3 meet or web3 huddle all of those things like there would always be a newer generation of applications so right now what we are seeing is like voice ai being uh like simultaneously fueled by a lot of people so we can also have those a new uh, paradigm of application building on top of this drtc network but the thing is like all the revenue that is made by the applications are actually distributed to the drtc network and that would come in form of uh huddle node rewards so like this is the whole like if we see like where the rewards are coming from the rewards are basically the gas fees that the applications pays to the network to get the real-time communication service with them. Awesome. Thanks, Shishmit. And I really like how you brought up the example of um, of Google Meets and Zoom and so on. Um, just to highlight the RTC market, guys, like it's huge right now, but it also has 
immense amounts of potential to grow in the future because, well, if you believe in the internet, what we do on the internet is we communicate with one another, right? And the more and more um, the humanity is progressing, the more real-time communication is becoming, the more we we have this need for real-time, low-latency data across across the different participants. So RTC market, uh, real-time communication market, is just growing. There are so many different applications, like um, one of the key applications that I'm super excited about is its applications in gaming. Um, you know, a lot of gaming apps are directly utilizing even um, chat functions as well as the uh, as well as um, video voice over IP in order to um, you know go to tournaments and so on in a social fashion. Then um, then there's metaverse as well. For metaverse, you really need a lot of a uh, lot of good um, real time bandwidth in order to power all of these real-time rooms and also communicate amongst multiple agents, not just one-to-one. Um, of course, there's various different applications in AI as well, because you have various different um, AI bots that need to communicate amongst one another in order to exchange information according to their own um, uh, own skill sets. And so there's various applications that are only projected to grow in the future based on all the technological, like major technological advancements that we're seeing um, come in the coming years. Okay, um, jumping back to um, to the DRTC network, we have two different ways through which you can actually get financial skin in the game on the DRTC network. One is through tokens and then the other one is through nodes. Now tokens, of course, you, you're all familiar with it. It gives you financial skin in the game because the better that the, the underlying asset does, the more you benefit as well because you also own the token and you're able to exchange it for a higher value. So the value of the token also grows. Um, and then it also gives you a voice in the system through governance. So that way you're able to also influence the way through which the system develops and is built as well. Um, how things are distributed, how wealth is distributed within the system, um, any sort of protocol design um, decisions you can actually influence through governance by holding tokens. Um, of course, like this is of course limited, right? Like in some um, in some ecosystems, you'll see that governance, like tokens really give you a lot of power. In some others, you'll see lesser of it. Uh, on Huddle, we plan to enable uh, governance in a sort of sequential fashion as well. So, um, you know, early on, um, you'll have lesser amount of um, things to govern on because we, it's already fairly openly developed. And then in the future, um, just actually as we're speaking, we're thinking about open sourcing all of the different modules within the DRTC network. And also uh, we're, we're going to be releasing some of the designs as well soon so that you guys can um, co-collaborate with us on the protocol, on the protocol economics as well. Um, then the second thing that we have is nodes. Uh, nodes give you both, like they give you, of course, financial skin in the game because you're able to earn tokens by having nodes. Um, then they also give you governance power. Now, I think we'll actually even um, make some specific, um, uh, we, we will actually definitely definitely make specific um, structures that will allow for nodes to have a um, more power and more say um, in terms of the governance of the network, because of course, as nodes, you're not just like tertiary uh, holders and watchers of the system, you're actively contributing uh, into the supply side of the system. That means you actually have this true ownership, you have ownership to the means of production, um, you're basically one side of the network. So nodes need to have more of a voice and say in terms of how the protocol is designed, how um, how we distribute resources and so on on the DRTC network. Um, by being node, you also get ultra early access to tokens. Now, this is where the incentivized testnet comes into play um, because by participating in the incentivized testnet, testnet as a node, you are able to get access to these early rewards, like these testnet rewards um, or testnet huddle is only accessible to nodes that are coming in early. Right, and um, this pool of twenty one percent that is being allocated to nodes that's also only purely reserved for nodes. Like no other, um, there's no other way to essentially get access to these early tokens, um, and actually have them vest at five percent um, coming come the TG. 
And the reason why we are prioritizing nodes so much is because, of course, you guys are also true owners. Um, nodes are like true owners um, in the network because you own one side of the network and that way you're really like co-building and co-contributing to the DRTC network itself. Okay, uh, I think earlier I related, um, I spoke a little bit about um, the FTV uh, on the timeline slide and how that, um, how FTV is computed. The FTV that we're actually talking about when it comes to node sales is purely node sales FTV. So there's, there's the total FTV, which is a culmination of node sales FTV, FTV that is generated through um, product revenue and consum DRCC consumption revenue, as well as um, FTV that comes from tokens, that's the market cap, right? So that, that's the total FTV. Um, but in particular, I want to also highlight the node sales FTV. Um, and that is basically computed by um, taking in the revenue that we generate from node sales and then dividing it by the number of nodes that we sell um, in that particular tier times um, 0 0.21 because that's the 21% allocation that we're giving to nodes. So that way we're able to get a very good estimate of what the total FTV is going to be because um, the node sales, the, the nodes that have been sold represent 21% of, um, of the total um, FTV um, that is generated um, through node sales. So that's how FTV um, of um, node sales is computed. Um, also, the subscript refers to um, T, which is basically like the FTV for that tier. And then the C represents the cumulative um, revenue that has been um, that has been gained up until that tier through node sales. And VC is basically the number of nodes or the volume of nodes that have been sold up until that tier. So VC is a cumulative volume. And of course, the 21% is the um, TG allocation of tokens to the nodes. Um, this spreadsheet, I think I have it right here. Um, yes, so this is the media node, node sale dynamics. Um, now what's the main features here, um, of course, this is a lot of numbers, but quickly to digest, it's basically, uh, we are selling a number of nodes um, through all of these different tiers. As you can see, the earlier you enter, the better price you get on the node. And you also get, if you're able to pre-book, you also get exclusive access to these nodes. So that way you don't have to, you know, sit on your computer at 3 a.m. in order to buy the, <laughs> buy the nodes. Um, you're able to basically pre-book and then that way you don't have to uh, face the first come, first serve dynamics. And, um, and then the FDB actually grows through all of these tiers. So, you know, you enter early, you're able to enter at a, um, at a lower FTV, which means you're able, to, you're entering, um, entering early, just like you would uh, in an investment, and that way you have a much larger growth potential. Um, but of course, at the same time, you you also know that you know you you don't know how far we will actually go along with the node sales, so you are taking a bit a bigger risk if you enter early. But if you enter late, you're actually entering at a uh, with more confidence that there's tons of interest in these nodes. Uh, but of course, you're also going to be paying a little bit of a higher price in order to acquire these nodes. And uh, we want to ensure that like most people are able to come in as early as possible. So we have structured the node sales in such a way that, um, you know, we have a most amount of nodes um, allocated to the earlier tire tiers. And then going forward, um, we will also be rolling out more nodes um, after this 10th. Um, 10th tier as well. So what you're seeing here is essentially phase one of node sales, uh, which is up until 10 tiers. This totals totals here to 20,000 approximately. And um, of course, you can also get whitelisted, in which case you're able to access these earlier. Uh, we also have caps and so on. Uh, and of course, as, you, uh, as you're able to buy these nodes early in the incentivized assessment, you're also able to earn up to 500 per day. All right, now this is the incentivized testnet um, and how rewards are actually computed on the incentivized testnet. All the nodes that are in the incentivized testnet are able to earn up to five huddles per day. Um, the way that the reward is calculated is very, very simple. So we, we, we're employing a very basic media node um, bootstrapping reward function, which is just based on the uptime 
and the bandwidth. Um, the uptime score is essentially given by the hit rate of the number of successful pings that uh, happen over the entire day. So then if you get a 100% hit rate, that means your uptime score is one, and then you're able to get, um, you're able to get like the max, max um, reward on that. And then you've got the bandwidth score as well, which is computed as the average percentage of available bandwidth across the successful things that we've done throughout that day. So um, both of these actually contribute to, um, to the reward. And our max essentially is the maximum reward that is earnable. So if you get uh, perfect on U and perfect on B, then you're able to get R max here as well. So, um, and the bandwidth, of course, um, as well as the uptime, we will communicate that through the uh, requirements. I think the requirement right now is basically like 250 Mbps bandwidth and of course four core CPU. Um, but there is various different ways through which you can participate. You can participate directly just with your own internet and your laptop or you may also um, choose to delegate your node to a node operator, in which case um, you don't have to yourself worry about any of this. You can basically just delegate your worries away to, um, to a third party node operator. And all of these no all of these rewards, by the way, like all of the five huddle per day for all of the nodes that enter early, they're all coming in from the media node TG allocation pro, the 21%. Then we move to mainnet. Now, what we just saw right earlier is the incentivized testnet, but after TG, we will have mainnet. And in mainnet, nodes will be earning based on performance. Um, now, when it comes to performance, we've got several scores. As you can see here, we've got uh, availability, history of operation, the location of the, of the node, the location score, as well as the coverage score. Um, and of course, we've got also the the main element, which is the V here represents the quality of service. Um, all of these all of these scores essentially contribute to how much unit reward that the media node can earn. And then the total reward is computed by just multiplying the unit reward times the amount of DRTC data that has been contributed. So that gives the total reward for that particular uh, for that particular day or the, for that or for that particular meeting so that's that's the way that total reward is computed and we're actually going to be um, releasing docs that will outline how each of these scores are computed but just to give you a little bit of a preview um, availability is basically related to uptime like how 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 much is your node um, up compared to down throughout the lifetime of the node. So ever since you started operating the node, how much is how much is your node active? Then history of operation represents the past history of how long you have been actually active on the network. Um, the location score represents your the node's location with respect to other media nodes in that network as well as well. So if you're located in an area where there's lots of other media nodes, then your rewards will be a little bit lower because the supply is quite high. But if you're if you as a node are located in an area where there's not a lot of media nodes, like in a supply sparse area, then you will be able to maximize your um, your reward earning potentially quite by quite much by quite a lot. And then we've got the coverage score. Coverage score refers to um, where you are located with respect to participants. So if you're located in a hotspot, like a major city um, where a lot of folks are actually participating in DRTC calls, then you get a really high um, coverage score as well. So that's, there's various different ways to which you can actually play around and make it suit, make this reward function suit you so that you can actually maximize your earnings on the mainnet as well. You know whether you're located in a remote area or in a or in a um, buzzing metropolis, you're able to um, figure out how we can actually like maximize the um, reward um, earning potential for your node as well. And all of these we will be um, publishing in more detail how these are calculated um, very soon, maybe even next week actually. Um, and yeah, so um, these rewards, um, once they're computed, they actually get minted via our dynamic minting mechanism. So once the um, once 
the DRTC network is live, the dynamic minting and burning mechanism kicks in. So we will burn tokens in proportion to the amount of uh, demand that is coming in, so through consumption, and we will be minting tokens based on how much supply is being contributed to the network by media nodes. And so these are new tokens that are going to be minted in order to reward these media nodes. These, this reward is not going to come from that 21% allocation pool. So you can see this, what this does is essentially over time, the nodes will own a greater and greater percentage of the tokens of the network, right? Because the nodes are basically what are basically the entities within the ecosystem that are gaining from the new tokens that are being minted um, into the circulating supply. So all the things, all the new tokens that are being minted are actually going to node rewards. And this is on top of the 21%. And that's all um, that's all going to be contributing towards the greater and greater ever growing chunk of the economy that is going to be owned by nodes. And of course, um, all of these um, tokens that get minted, they all add to the circulating supply. Awesome. Cool. Now let's talk about the token market. OK, starting from the very basics, the way that market cap is computed um, today is basically just by multiplying the circulating supply, the current um, current amount of tokens that are actually in circulation in the network times the price of that token. Now the circulating supply, um, just to be very clear, like this refers to all of the tokens that are in circulation, so that are being actively traded. Um, it also refers to the tokens that are being held in various, various wallets. It does not include the tokens that are not vested. It doesn't include the tokens that are um, locked up somewhere or burned. It doesn't include those tokens. It's basically just the tokens that are truly circulating at that time. And times the price, of course, that's um, self-explanatory. Awesome. So post TG, what will there are quite a few different things that will happen that will all contribute to this market cap. The reason why I like wanted to prime you guys on this uh, formula here is like I want to show how the various different mechanisms that we're going to be discussing in the next slide all contribute towards increasing market cap or FTV. So this is where we're discussing essentially like the growth of FTB or the growth of market cap um, through the life cycle, through the like basically the upcoming phases that we're going to see everything from node sales, then moving on to incentivized testnet, then going on to TG. So post TG, there are a few things that happen, right? The first thing is that we actually start generating revenue from DRTC data consumption and the DRTC network is actually going to be absorbing that value as well through the burn mechanism. And what that does is that it increases the network FTV, the DRTC network's FTV increases because of the fact that it's capturing this value from the DRTC data consumption as well. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this team at Huddle One has actually been working on um, on the product of Huddle One as well as Farhouse for four years. So we actually already have, um, and you know, I have to give credit to the team. I actually just joined um, uh, about a year ago, I think. And this team has been working on building out this um, Huddle One since so long. And what this means is that we've actually already been generating revenue um, from various clients on Huddle One um, through this SDK as well as just through the um, um, just through the product itself. So this revenue is already being generated. The only thing is what's happening during TG is that we're now starting to capture that value that is generated on the DRTC network itself. So that revenue from data consumption is going to be captured, which is going to increase FDB of the network. Now. Keep in mind, this is like the network FTV. There's also, of course, the node sales FTV as well. So putting all of that together is where we get the total FTV. Um, then the other main thing that happens is that vesting begins. That means more tokens are going to slowly start entering circulating the circulating supply. Now, when these tokens are actually entering into circulation, of course, this is directly proportional to the market cap that also drives the market cap up. Um, same thing happens with minting. Um, minting mints new tokens into the system. So that means the circulating supply increases for that reason as well. Um, and then the burning 
what that does is that that actually decreases circulating supply. Now you're taking tokens away from the system. But what it does is that it increases price because the tokens now become a little bit more scarce. So that also contributes to the market cap. And then finally, um, and this is not like a core part of the protocol, but what what is also happening at the same time is that we as a team have been basically speaking with various different exchanges, also setting up various mechanisms in order to boost liquidity once we do TGE through um, various different mechanisms like liquidity pools and so on. And what this means is that we want to maximize our exposure to the most amount of traders that are available in the ecosystem. We want to maximize access as well by enabling for folks from various different geographies, various different uh, regulatory environments as well to participate into our system. Um, we also want to maximize liquidity so that we can build the most efficient market for the HODL token. What all of this does is that it makes it very attractive for people to trade. And that means that trading volume increases. And when trading volume increases, that's also contributing to a positive dynamic um, on the huddle ecosystem as well. So virtually what that looks like is basically um, basically like this. I'm representing um, the FDV as well as the market cap in these concentric circles here. Um, but where we are is we're we're right here. We're in like the pre-sale of media nodes, you know, whitelisting and so on. Uh, throughout this entire phase, what we're doing is that we're generating revenue from node sales. What that does is that it, it captures value in the form of node sales FTB. And this node sales FTB is directly impacting the um the it's contributing to the total FTB of the um of the DRTC network as well. What that means is that it's contributing to the price of the token. So that's the node sales FTV. And once the node sales end, we will also be kicking off the incentivized testnet. Um, now the incentivized testnet is where media nodes are generating their testnet rewards. And as they're generating their testnet rewards, that also contributes to the um, to the FTV as well, because then we've got these testnet rewards that are basically like in a growing bucket that will start to get unlocked um, once vesting starts at DG. And at DG, um, various things happen. Um, number one is that the exchange listings will go public. Uh, liquidity pools will become available. Um, those two are basically contributing to the last point here, the open market and liquidity. Uh, of course, like all of these things, I've represented them as arrows here, but you know we're working on it already right now the exchange listings liquidity pools and so on um but when they when they become active is basically like the tg and then the core things that become active in terms of the drtc network itself is that drtc network starts capturing the value that is generated through consumption of drtc data and so that's the drtc consumption revenue that's also contributing to the increasing tg and that's represented by this pink circle here and then vesting contributes to increasing in tokens uh, in circulating supply. And then we've of course got the dynamic mint and burn mechanism as well that are also contributing to the overall um, token, token market cap. So all of these different things actually contribute to the growing token market cap that we have. And so we're already on the journey of actually getting to this point um, by slowly going growing the revenue here and then through the node sales FTB. Um, and also in the next phase, increasing FDB through the testnet rewards. So come TGE, we should be well prepared in order to make the um, make the chart look very much like something that um, represents the true value that has been building up um, in this network up until that point. Awesome. Um, I think that covers um, most of what um, we wanted to cover today. Like I know that we have gone through a whole bunch of stuff, guys, like feel free to ask us questions. Um, you know, Shantanu will invite you up on stage if you wanna ask, or um, if you don't feel like speaking up, um, then feel free to um, drop questions in the chat. Yep, yep, I think 
that was like perfect explanation that you gave and i like really enjoyed it just like if you guys can if you guys enjoyed like all the community you can like send like some reactions i think that would be great to like have this hunch back but uh, yeah so one of the other thing i think questions were like asked uh, what were the questions like i'll just go through the chat yeah so basically the reward like there are the network would be in two phase one is the testnet phase and another is the mainnet phase but uh, before the testnet there would be node sales happening so node sales is a way to distribute the network but you don't need like gigabytes of uh, internet or all of those part to be uh, to run able to run the nodes in the testnet so you would like if you're just having like basic uh, internet and if you have uh like a basic laptop and all you would be able to run 100 nodes and you would be earning one but even that like if you don't want to run like 100 node or you don't want to like have that technical expertise you can be uh post the nodes on one of our nas providers so that would like cost around 10 to 15 dollars per month but then like you would be earning like 500 tokens so that would sufficiently around like one to five percent of the revenue that a person is making through huddle food to the rep, uh, to the costing of the things so that's what would be like the cost the cost of running the nodes would approximately be around 10 to 15 dollars if you are running it on the nas but if you are running it on your own uh, devices or hardware devices which is what we actually recommend would be technically free uh, on those part the other part is like if you don't want to run the nodes and ever you can basically delegate your nfts uh, to the other node operator that are actually running the nodes and treat the same rewards and the people who accept the delegation they basically have this commission from the other people so all of these dynamics we would love to cover on next set of calls like how the rtc network exactly works from inside how media nodes runs how delegation happens so we would be covering all of those things into uh, the next set of calls one of the exciting updates that we are happening is that we have just finished our work of like writing down the white paper and in coming days we will be launching our white papers around the drtc network so you guys are like super super early, uh, on those but like we haven't like started the action yet uh, on those but but i really love like the way uh, people uh, have showed up being uh, organic about the huddle tokens we just wanted to be very transparent about the tokens and like we wanted like community to know each and every aspect of it and like if community suggests us some, something and all of those but we would be very happy to incorporate them one of the good things that's happening is like uh community is like taking up the logo like okay this is how it needs to be done they're like they're like having valuable contribution on the token economics and even the marketing and other collab managers but we ideally envision like the drtc network to be community owned and community driven while the whole huddle team and every other people are the enablers of it and just uh driving the network to the course that we have also the drtc network is quite innovative it's not like an average layer one or layer two so uh, what layer two does is that it just scale the operations that the layer one is happening but drtc network is like the most unique uh, of the network like it enables people to host your audio video calls and all of those but so imagine like if all the whatsapp and google meet or telegram calls goes through a goes uh, is routed from your media node so you get to earn that uh, the value that they are actually producing in the world instead of like private companies giving all of those things so ideally this is like an innovation that happening it's like what i believe is like one of the best thing that the web rtc uh would be having as an upgrade and even like in fact in the web3 communities so it's there is like an end utility for people to use the network and it's like a win-win situation for everyone who is part of the network so yeah this is all i hope you guys had enjoyed this uh, session and let me know if we need to do such session more and more happy to accommodate all of you thanks jasmin i'm seeing that uh, there is a couple of other questions here on the chat um ni asks if there will be no checkers to help ensure our nodes are working at an optimal level yes indeed um so 
actually our dev team has worked on an amazing um amazing system architecture design that allows for media nodes to check themselves so basically um it is a self policing and self reporting um mechanism one media node checks the other in a randomized fashion so we don't have special like checker nodes or node checkers as a spe- as a special and um and a separate thing from the media nodes themselves essentially we have this mechanism that allows for media nodes to check one another if they're actually working at a optimal level and actually think that um maybe some of our devs are on this call omen or Rush, um they would be very happy to actually like deep dive into this um perhaps we can do it on our next call where we actually like walk through the system architecture but you'll also get to read more about this on the white paper by the way yes so um vivek on chain asks uh so the reward is based on how much bandwidth i make to the network right Yes, that applies um, to the um, to the mainnet, and in terms of the testnet, um, there is of course like a minimum bandwidth requirement, and you can if you bring like multiples of that minimum bandwidth requirement, then you also are able to um, earn more as well. Um, but particularly like this one applies mainly to the mainnet because in mainnet you're able to um, scale in a very um, yeah, in a very performance-based fashion. Um, whereas in the testnet, you are, of course, like there's a max cap on the reward, which is the five huddle per day. Uh, if you want to maximize your rewards even more, then you buy another node and, um, you know, put your excess bandwidth on that other node as well. So that way you have like multiples of um, of rewards on the testnet itself. Okay, um, I think Xerox Vulture is asking how much nodes can I buy at max? Uh, we do have a cap, um, especially in the early tiers um, of how many nodes each um, each individual can buy. Um, we It's different for every tier. Um, there is, I think it's right now like 20 for the earliest tiers and then it goes to 30, 40, and then on tier, tier 10, it's 100. Um, but we will be publishing like the final numbers for this soon as well. Yep, as of now, like they are like uh, converging, but there would be like little, like not like a drastic changes. But like whenever we are making changes, we would be like eff- effectively communicating to the same. But it won't move like more than five or ten percent on the uh, node since TS. So we are, we have, we are like one of the things like we are yet to do the snapshot date, but we would be announcing the snapshot date when we would be doing it. And then we would be like announcing all of those things. But this diagram was like to give a rough idea of how the tiers and everything would be working. So we actually made like a whole simulator of NodeShell. I think Weber was working on it. And like, we would be like open sourcing that also. Like, so if someone wants to like play around how the node shell tier works, how the pricing works, and how the volume decay works. That's it's like a perfect tool to play around with. But uh, ideally, like the earlier the people come, the more rewarding it is. It's like how the everything is actually designed. But by the way, I think this was supposed to be like one hour call and it extended to one and a half. I think people are like loving the calls. Uh, but like I think we should do more of this call more often so that people like actually have this understanding around the whole DRTC network and uh, yeah I'm so honored and grateful for you guys to have here and uh, be like learn about more token economics code on those part so yeah thank you guys have a nice day awesome uh, I think that was super amazing uh, Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Shruti Shushmat, for throwing uh, some light on those, some really great topics. I mean, I, I, I didn't really knew where my one and a half hour went. I mean, this is super, super informative. Uh, any last final closing notes? Uh, Ayush, where do you want to put it? I was, I'm, I'm so happy that I was a spectator to this call. Uh, like it was a, it was a masterclass. I was just writing on, on our uh, Discord community. It was a masterclass by 
Shruti and uh, Sushmat essentially. And even though I've uh, been building this for four years now, I still learned a lot today as well. And uh, there were, I just, I just saw uh, there was 29 questions asked. We have answered a lot of questions, but a lot of the questions we'll also answer in Discord as well. Uh, uh, moving forward, we have just written down all the questions. Uh, very good questions asked by Ni, CK, MR, Vivek, and a lot of other people as well. So yeah, I think for I am just being live tweeting. I did almost twelve tweets. I didn't even realize I missed one of my call. It was a client call. I missed it. Like I can get do that client call again, but I don't want to miss this live session right now. Not really. Uh, it was really inspiring. I think we should do more of it. I was also telling our marketing team that we should do more uh, marketing regarding tokenomics. Uh, so Shmi always talks about it, uh, and I think. Uh, Today was a testament. Uh, nobody essentially have, have been a part of the crypto industry for four and a half years now. Very rarely we have seen that such a detailed breakdown, not just a white paper handed off to the community, but essentially white paper being broken down by team to explain each and everything. And this is just tokenomics right now, like token market and node market. We also have our uh, white paper session also happening. And it's just not a white paper launch where we're just giving white paper to community. People will be explaining Sushmit, Shruti, web hub everyone else who have worked on the white paper as well a lot of people there will also be explaining things and uh, yeah this makes me always pumped to uh, wake up every day and uh, and build because though like the from our side we have built the demand side of things but like thinking on uh, such first principles is very rare and also being so transparent is very rare and um, so I'm, I'm really happy and really proud on um, on what we have built so far and and I'm very happy with the kind of questions which people have asked. It's it's so awesome. Like questions have been like really, really amazing. And we'll do our best to answer these questions as well. Uh, and yeah, I think Shruti, people have been cheering you on Discord as well now. So I think we'll see you more on Discord because people have been asking questions. We have been doing just doing fires there uh, on all your different incentivized uh, test net rewards, the, the main net rewards, the test net rewards and everything else so kudos i think that's that's about it from my side i might go on to the different client all i have four minutes left one of my teammate is covering for me but uh barring that uh good night everyone good morning everyone wherever you are and that's about it from my side we're looking forward to see you all in the white paper session please don't please come in that session as well it will be a beautiful session uh and you will really like it yeah so like you have seen like uh, so one of my closing note would be like if this this phase like this app is made on top of like drtc network and is running on one of the nodes internal testing nodes and you can see how performant the node is like i'll just like screen share how to see but all of you guys can actually see so you just need to go to here this uh this section and go to the network stats and you would see all the network happening so all of this thing is being handled by media nodes. And now like you guys would be having an opportunity to run this media node. So it's not like the node is not yet made. It's already live. It's already running. And it's very performant. It's like one of the best media nodes to handle uh, the RTC. So you can see like it's happening. Now the call is happening in less than 10 milliseconds. Like we actually claim like 100 milliseconds. But the network is operating like it's super fast like so if you spend something or do something on top of this network it works out of the box so yeah, this is the closing notes but we would always be working uh, to make the media notes better and we would always be working to make it valuable so more apps build on top of network and we would always be working so that all of the value is actually distributed back to the now you're just adding on to that we have more than 7 million minutes of meeting we've already done like huddle zero one app Meet is one of the product. Audio space is another product. We have more products like uh, Far House. These are all built internally, uh, like by the team itself. All of the uh, all of these are production grade ready right now. Even if we use Twitter Spaces right now, you'll see that it breaks in between. Today, uh, I didn't see things like uh, and uh, like anything getting broken here because I think we can handle that scalability pretty well as well. Uh, and let's say. It's very difficult for a network if you have seen any other networks in the uh, in the crypto world right now where a, 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 a token network has built its own network has built its own infrastructure had built its own consumer app we have done all of these three things in itself uh which basically means that it, it's technically five companies wrapped into one 
and this is all being done by 29 to 30 people right now but now that is becoming bigger and bigger because what we always needed in the last four years shruti mentioned was people should know about it i think uh, people are not that aware uh, and now people are starting to get aware because community is helping community is there and we have a very thriving discord now touch wood uh, so yeah i think we demand side being solved is one of the we have a very good demand pipeline uh, we all also have a 35 million minutes every month demand coming in um, moving forward so in the main net reward which shruti mentioned uh, the significant earning the earnings will increase significantly as well because it's a system which is sustainable in itself there's a revenue in the system there is demand in the system and there is an escape velocity exponential curve in terms of uh, numbers of meetings which have been done and uh, there are way more things which we will talk about it in, in detail later but on our l3 we have significantly more things that it will be complete economy of communication building on top of it which will make things uh, which will make it really beautiful on uh, the kind of impact it will create yeah, that's about it from my side. That's my closing thought. Yeah, good night. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Sorry, Shruti. <laughs> Oh, go ahead, uh, Shantru. It's fine. Um, I just wanted to hop in and say um, I'm feeling so much love from the community. Thank you all for joining in. Um, you know, this has been, you know, years in the making and just now it's being realized. Um, so I'm so glad that you all are coming along the journey with us and becoming true owners of the DRTC network as well. Yes, decentralization at its peak. Awesome. Uh, perfect. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for joining in. Thank you so much, Sushmit, Shruti, Ayush, Weber, for chiming in and talking more about the whole tokenomics in, uh, on Hardlow One. I think, yeah, we have more sessions planned in. Uh, as Sushmit mentioned, there is a white paper sneak peek that we'll also do very, very soon. So once again, thank you so much for joining in. Please do put in your feedback on Discord and see you all in the next session. Perfect. Have a very good time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.